trucking, right? So we have uh, we have the the base curve for the armature, and now we just need to construct it in some way, right? So all of the information that we did before is still applicable. We have um, the arc that we're going to go back, and we're going to have to make a copy of it, probably using move. Um, or uh, then we're going to have to use ruled surface to connect them. Then we're going to offset surface. Then we're going to do all those things that you saw before. So, but let's uh, start with that move, right? So this move right here is uh, similar, right? It's it's very similar in the sense that it follows the same follows the same um, objective, right? Because we have our base normal going this way across the width of our bridge. So I can use most of this, right? I'm going to need move. I'm going to need amplify. I'm going to need base normal. Um, and I don't think I'm going to need an addition in this case. So I'll just copy these and put them down here. Now the, the amplify, well, obviously the geometry we're going to move is going to be this. And you're going to see that it jumps over to the other side. That's not really what I'm trying to do yet. I'll do that later. But um, the amplify is just going to be what I'm changing. And in this case, I'm going to make it a manual amplify because, you know, I'm going to need to do a few things here to get it to work the way I want. Um, so I'll just put a slider on here for um, zero is less than, and I'm going to say 24 for 24 inches. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to land yet, but I'm going to go up to math, operators, division, and put in my... Um, feet to inch conversion, which would be my scale of 24 divided by 12. Plug that in, and then I can just push it off that way. Now, this is moving to the inside. I um, did not necessarily do that on purpose, but it's okay because if you look at the actual bridge here, you see the arm does extend beyond the entire width of that guardrail. So we'll need to do this twice. We'll have to offset in and then offset out. Um, so that basically means I'm going to stick with 10 inches in that direction, copy paste, do the same thing, except I'm going to change this one to negative. So now I have two arcs that are going on either side. I just need to balance them. So I think I'll do something like eight inches on the outside and 12 inches on the inside, maybe, something like that. So why am I doing that, right? I need to do that in order to create my first surface um, to, to generate the full geometry. That's from here to here. And I just go to surface, freeform, ruled surface. That's going to be um, like that. Yeah, so um, you can see once you start to get the hang of understanding, and this is sort of a side, a, a side note that I want to just kind of present to you real quick. Once you start to isolate packages of components into an idea of what you do with it, it becomes far easier for you to start stringing together really complex definitions with relative ease. I mean, I know that anytime I need to move something based off of a, a variable, in my head, I see that. I see, I see um, the move, I see amplify, I see a normal, and then I think about what information I'm going to be feeding it to give it the, the magnitude. Every time I'm thinking about moving, that just pops into my head. So you guys should be practicing you know, these mini packages in your mind as you're starting to learn the software. So anyway, um, that's sort of number one, but the cool thing about this right now is I can go all the way back to um, this right here, and I can change where this is on the surface. So I, when I'm looking at this a little bit more carefully, that's not really halfway, is it? Right? So, um, so I actually want to slide it up a little bit, and I think 75% of the way up is going to be more appropriate. So now um, the last thing I need to do on this thought is um, do my offset surface, and then I need to do ruled surfaces to create that solid volume. And we, we already did this before. We did it um, here, these ones right here. So we can pretty much borrow a lot of that. Um, but rather than borrowing it, I think I'm going to reconstruct it because 
it's easier. So anyway, um, I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to do um, under utility. It's an offset surface. I'll plug that in here. And then I just need to give it an offset distance. And this is going to be either positive or negative. So rather than trying to figure out which direction I want it to go, I'm just going to say negative. Um, uh, how many feet could that possibly be? Let's say 36. Negative 36 to positive 36. And then I just need to, you know, use the same feet to inch conversion thing. Plug that into D, and there you go. That's actually not too bad, something close to that. Right, so we can calibrate that later, but really the essence here is that I have my original ruled surface, I have my new offset surface, these two right here. I need to uh, loft their edges together in order to create that solid. Let me see if I can find where we specifically, there it is, right here. So all we did was, um, we did a deconstruct on one, we did a deconstruct on the other, and then we took it together and we just did a boundary volume with all of them. So um, let's do that. I'm going to go to Surface Analysis Deconstruct VREP right there. Do it again right here. And that's going to be the edges that I want to um, ruled surface together. So I'll go back into Surface Freeform. And I'll do a ruled surface from these edges to these edges. That's that right there. Now I just need to do that boundary volume. So that's under um, intersect, shape, boundary volume. And just make sure you're grabbing the right things. Um, we have one surface here, we have one surface there, and we have our multiple uh, lofted slash ruled surfaces here. So one, two, and three. That's that. So I'll turn all this stuff off. And I'll, I'll recap in a moment, but that's what you have. That created our arm. Yeah. So that, that also like closes like the end of the little arch too when you put the boundary box? It does. You mean this face right here? Yeah, that. Yeah, because what's happening is, um, I'll draw it up on the board. Um, it's, it's not the same as, I think what you might be thinking of is like if you extrude curve, right? it's going to leave the top and bottom yeah, open? Yeah. yeah. So the difference here is that we have a surface above, like that, and a surface below, like that. And those are already planar surfaces. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what we've done with this, the ruled surface, that's what leaves it open. See that? So we've actually taken the ruled surface, which connects them. Uh, let me cross hatch it that way, right? And we've joined it with those two surfaces. That was a really badly drawn, isometric drawing, but it was way out of perspective. But yeah, so, so that creates the geometry that we need. Now, here's another cool thing we can do. Um, well. We just did a lot. So let me recap, and then we'll, we'll do the roof, and then I'll worry about the arm later. But uh, so everything we've done in this particular segment here, um, we just went from, um, let me turn these on. Wait, which ones are those? Base normal, we moved and moved. Oh, those are the curves. Never mind. Um, so basically, all we did was we took that original arc that we created, right? We moved one in along that edge, and we moved one out along this edge. Those were this and that. Then we lofted them together to create one individual um, surface that followed along that top edge. Then we offset that surface to create the bottom. Then we deconstructed them to grab the edges, lofted those together, and bound them all together into a solid volume. What questions do you have? Are you guys understanding it still at this pace, conceptually? 
Yeah, as long as you understand the idea of what's happening, that's enough at this stage. Okay.